Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at www.audibletrial.com slash charity strike. Over 100,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Now Dwayne Wade and LeBron James will come out of the game to the roar of the crowd. The Miami Heat are once again NBA champions. LeBron James captures that elusive title he so desperately coveted. The chance say it all. LeBron James, MVP of the finals. Given everything you've been through, when the clock hit triple zeros, What's the first thing that ran through your mind? Uh, it's about damn time. It's about damn time. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 uh, Miami. Uh, uh, South Beach, bringing the heat, uh. <laughs> Welcome into the Charity Strike Miami edition. Oh, I'm feeling all jiggy and stuff. Once again, I am Greg the Rebound Jones. Sitting across me is the always jiggy midlife crisis. What's up, bitches? Yeah, you feeling jiggy today? I am jiggy like hell. Yeah, I feel so uh, urban and ghetto. Oh, damn. Yeah, that calls for one of these. Oh, absolutely. I bet you LeBron's had a few. Yeah, he was up till 6 in the morning partying. Oh, yeah. So if you couldn't tell, we have new NBA champions. Sadly, to my prediction, it's the NBA or it's the Miami Heat as opposed to Oklahoma City Thunder. Well, I thought it was time for LeBron to win one. I guess so. But he still has four more to go. If you know what I'm saying. Whoa. Yeah. Kobe reference. Yeah. Uh, or Derek Fisher. Anyways, uh, welcome in. Uh, make sure you guys check out. Now, they've been off for a week or so. Uh, the Admin Reggie Show at theadminregishow.com. I uh, talked to Adam the other day. I was like, hey, where's your new show? He's like, oh, ran out of time. I was like, Psh. Wow. Wow. Really? We don't run out of time. That's right. So they guaranteed that there'll be the B1 this weekend. Uh, Amazon, if you guys shop at Amazon, which I know you all do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Go to our website, thecharitystrike.com. Click on the Amazon banner at the bottom or on the sponsors link. And it uh, doesn't cost you anything extra, but uh, kicks down a little something good to us. That's right. You get the great deals at Amazon, not to mention that you get uh, to help us out a little bit. Exactly. It's we a need win-win. all the help we can get. Yeah. It's too bad it's only money. Money. We need some therapy. Yeah, if you could pay for some therapy as a donation, that would help. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Also, if you're into uh, audiobooks, you like listening to people talk, if you like listening to us, obviously, check out uh, audibletrial.com slash charity strike. There's also a banner on our website for that. Uh, and new, this is kind of, I don't want to say breaking, but uh, it's finally been put into place. We are now a part of Our City Radio. You can check them out at ourcityradio.com. We're going big time. Yeah, uh, we are part of their sports section, obviously. You can listen to us the day after we uh, excuse me after we put up the show so every wednesday and saturday at this point saturdays at 4 p.m uh you can hear the charity strike uh i assume actually you know what they're not based out of california so uh good question would be as to 4 p.m what time zone oh wow if i was smart i would have figured that out before i actually said it out loud but do check out rcityradio.com we'll be on the sports section all the time but specifically the day after we air we'll be on there you can listen to us there as well um so that's pretty awesome Make I sure. will be glued to my computer. You're going to be watching porn? And then after that, I'm going to watch or listen to our show. If you're smart, you'd watch the porn and listen to our show. Why didn't I think of that? It's like a two-for-one special. That's why you're the producer. It, it's true. It is so effing true. Um, anyways, so yeah, check them out. Also, we have voicemails from, of course, Haiku Hank, and then uh, also Trigger called in because he's a bitch and can't be here. So, so here's that. Hey everybody, this is Rebound from the Charity Strike, and you've reached our voicemail. We're off being celebrities right now, so leave a message and uh, maybe we'll play it on the air. Oh, Daddy Yo's Haku Hank on the phone! Anyways, I got my episode 44 Haku, and here it goes! Repo, Mr. Rebound! Greg's Balls! 
in my mouth <laughs> makes haku ain't grow down south. The liquor's still choked. Oh, daddy, yo. Asshole. I'll talk to you Tuesday. Wow. <laughs> hey, Rebound, it's Ben Phil, it's Trigger Mike. So good. Uh, I just want to call He's in and again. remind people of the fights tonight. Like UFC on FX4, Green Manor versus Clay Guida goes down. Great card, great lineup. Uh, the really Facebook so much fights, if you want to watch time. on Facebook, there's two <laughs> fights on there starting at 2, 2 to 3. There'll be two fights at uh, Pacific Standard Time, 5 Eastern. Uh, Fuel TV will have a few fights, I believe it's 4 or 5, maybe 6 fights. That starts at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Eastern, and then uh, the main shit, the good shit, goes down at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on FX. That's right, the channel that has Louie, one of my favorite shows, that ass show. But uh, FX also has UFC, and that's at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 9 Eastern. That'll have Clay Guida versus Green Maynard in a five-round badass lightweight fight. Uh, and then also on the I don't give a fuck section, Ooh. don't forget to mention uh, rebound. Uh, fuck UFC 147. I don't give a fuck about it. Wow. You don't tell me what fuck to do. Fuck you, UFC. Yeah. Good job tonight. You're not the fuck fucking you producer. Tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, I decide what goes on the That's don't right. fuck section. He needs to know his role. Who do you think you are? Pew, pew. Bitch. Yeah. I kiss his ass every day. That's the only reason I'm on the show. It's true. And you need to learn. Yeah. Learn how to kiss some ass. Yeah. I'll kick your ass Ooh. out. Oh, God. But I think it's on to uh, more actual sports talk. Oh, yeah. Wow, I wonder when we get uh, tired of that song. Was LeBron just hugging his mom on TV? I think that was his mom. Oh. Uh, let me ask Delonte real quick. Yeah. <laughs> he would know what hugging his mom feels like. Yeah, and then some. Mm-hmm. Uh, basketball time, as you can tell, and as I've already mentioned, the NBA Finals winners, Miami Heat, unfortunately for me. Congratulations uh, to the Heat. That's what I meant. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, the, LeBron had a triple double last night. Twenty six yeah. points, thirteen assists, eleven rebounds. Obviously, he's a great player. But yes, uh, he is. You got four to go. If you'd asked me a year ago, I was not a LeBron James person, but I think he's changed a lot this year, and I've changed my mind. I think I he feel, deserved it. Yeah, I feel like he's grown a lot this year. He has a lot. I he's, think, according to him, uh, losing last year really made him stop and think and, mm-hmm. and do some soul searching, and, and that's why he changed. So yeah, he said a lot of last year's. Uh, Motivation to play was hatred towards the uh, haters. Yeah, so just right. hater on hater crime, and this year it was more about team and winning and and all that cutesy stuff. Yes, so. all the things you need to say to be. Yeah. A, Though I like, will say, I really, really wanted Fish to get that sixth ring and show it in Kobe's face. Well, he should have signed with the Heat. I guess so. There he almost goes. did too. Yeah, I thought he was going to get it with Thunder, but I guess not. Well, I, yeah, but if he is going to continue with the Thunder, hopefully he can and will. But I think the Thunder has a has a future ahead. Of yeah, he does become free agent at well, I guess as of today. Um, but we'll see where he resigns. He did get a, uh, eleven points last night. Not too bad for a yeah. bench. Yeah, not bad. Um, Had see. flagrant foul. Yeah, <laughs> Durant got a t- thirty-two points. Westbrook had 19. So uh, LeBron not crazy in the scoring department last night, but the triple double. It was a team game, if you yep. will. Yes, it and certainly was, man. They yeah. look at all the people they had in double uh, figures in scoring, and yeah, it's yeah, the whole team. All their starters were double figures. Yeah, and uh, Mike Miller also off the bench had 23. So that's pretty big. Yeah, Mike Miller. Where did he come from? Yeah, he was he was the third leading scorer on the team, and he was off the bench. Yeah, exactly. It, which you know comes to me. I, I was thinking about this today, kind of the, like the the guys in the background, like the who's who of the Miami Heat. Yeah, and I'm thinking about in Game Two when Shane Betty put down 17 points. Yeah, where'd that come from? Nowhere. And then in Game Four, when Mario Chalmers scored 25. Yeah, yeah. So every now and then, different uh, players kind of. Wake up on the heat, apparently. Exactly, and that's part of the reason why they won. I mean, yeah, it, yeah LeBron and Wade and Bosch, the big three, did their thing, but they have some good support. Yeah, I mean, they're getting paid to do their thing, though. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, they have to do their thing. Uh, we have some clips from after the game last night. The first one is of uh, my most favorite person in the world, David Stern. All right. Thank you very much. Good evening. 
Here to present the Larry O'Brien, the Larry O'Brien Trophy to oh, the Larry Miami Heat NBA Commissioner David. David Stern. Thank you very Thanks. much <laughs> to the Heat and to the Thunder this for the captivating <laughs> yes, sir. basketball fans around the world it's with like this March. series and making a few more. Congratulations to a worthy opponent, the Western Conference champion, the Oklahoma City Thunder. But the night Western and the series yeah. belong to your I should listen. NBA Maybe. champion Miami Heat. No one else is. <laughs> You're just joining the crowd. Uh, yes, that's uh, David Stern. <laughs> uh, after after they won, Marge Stern. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's like the uh, the teenager from The Simpsons. Oh yeah, there you go. Would you like popcorn? <laughs> um, and then they went on to interview uh, Pat Riley, of course, because he is the Miami Heat. Uh, and the coach and the GM, he's everything in that front. He office. does it all. Yeah, you can. You know, Eric Spoelstra's there, but he's just Pat Riley's bitch. Rumor has it, oh, that this could be it for Riley. Really? Yes. Last year? Yes. Um, he's kind of hinted at it. Rumor has it, he sold his house and moved into an apartment in Miami. Oh. He has a house uh, here in I believe Malibu, Santa Monica, somewhere around there. Don't they all? Yeah. So. Um, it's uh, kind of a rumor. He's not saying yes or no, but I mean, this is a good way for him to go out if he wants to go out. That's true. Go out yeah. a champion. Yep. Uh, well, here's a little from him and uh, his little buddy Eric Spolstra. Pat, 45 years for you in the NBA. This is your eighth title as a player, coach, executive. What stands out about this one? Well, but for the grace of God, I go. Okay, that's what stands out about it. And uh, this is a great, great, great group. You just said I go. Uh, oh yeah. This He's is going. Right, right now not about anybody grace, else, grace but God. the coaches, the players, the staff, the employees that work for the Heat. Uh, obviously, everybody has brought this the together fluffers. to make it happen. It's not easy. It's one of the hardest things you'll ever do. I want to congratulate OKC, okay, Clay Bennett, for being our bitches. <laughs> Sam Presti, <laughs> Scott Brooks, swept. and their team. We hope to see them again. I'm sure that we beat. will. Yeah. But most of all, it's really about all we'll of you out there. We'll see them again because, as and we I'd saw like last year, Dallas kicked permission. our ass. <laughs> Can we have a party tonight? Can you Is dig it? Okay it? <laughs> to have a party tonight. That's all I want to know. Pat, you once stood on a podium and you told people, and now you're on "We'll your be knees. right back here <laughs> next year." Care to do it again? Well, we we believe that that we built a team that's going to be around for a while. And our goal is to hopefully come back every year. It's always started out as an upstart. You become a team, you become a winner, a contender, and then one day you might become something special. And that's what we're shooting for. So to our guys, My mom said I'm something there's all these men back yeah. here. Right and here. now look, you're part all of the charity strike. Yeah, that's the special. Line. And for the head coach, Eric Spolstra, he did a job. I was going to say himself. <laughs> I got his tie right here. I'm wearing his tie. That's my puppet, Let's Eric Spolstra. Here. Thank you very much, Coach. He's always going to be Coach Pat Riley. Now the current Miami Heat head coach, Eric Spolstra. Back in 2006, Spo, you were an assistant coach when the Heat won the championship. What's the difference in how this one feels? A lot more pressure. Okay, probably uh, a lot more gray hairs. Uh, but this one was so gratifying. Uh, we love you, Miami. All right. Thank you for your patience. We remember last year. We wanted to make up for it. Yeah, we still are ready yeah. before we even started. What's exactly. The <laughs> biggest challenge you had as a coach well, the leading the team even back started. from last yeah. year when you lost in the finals? Well, just to pick our spirits up and, and, and stay uh, on course. Uh, we knew that we had confidence in what we could do, uh, but there would be a long season. Uh, and it would be a tough road. Really, we that kept was a on short saying season. all year long it would be the <laughs> Wasn't toughest it short thing this year? Yeah, we'd have so. to do in our professional uh, so lives to get back here and finally That's get been those four wins. Yeah. I, I thought they dropped 20 games off the schedule. Why? Wow. Well, everybody knows I'm a Manny Pacquiao fan. Ooh. Okay. Gee, I wonder why. And, uh, I don't get it. <laughs> there are you know, quite a few comparisons he's half Filipino. Um, oh. that our guys could relate to, uh, to that sport. Uh, we got knocked down to the canvas. You know, two or three times this playoff run. Uh, but knees. the thing that matters, we got, we got up uh, and kept on working. All right, go enjoy it. Congratulations. 
Yeah, whatever. And I shut my mouth and did what Pat told me to do. Yeah, I, that's when uh, Pat started elbowing him. Yeah. Shut that's up, enough. kid. Oh. Okay, kid. You've stolen the mic. You're on there longer than me. That's not I right. I say you can't talk longer than I do. Um, and then, of course, LeBron was the MVP of the finals. Duh. Oh, my God. Who would have seen that coming? Yeah. I thought they were going to give it to Haslam. I personally. was thinking Haslam all the way. If not Haslam, then maybe Battier. Or possibly LeBron's mom. Right. But for, that would have uh, been yeah. For sucking a mean dick. Um, <laughs> but uh, so here's LeBron. Uh, I, I cut about half of it out because it's a long speech, but here's here's some of LeBron uh, during his MVP speech. Going back to last year's finals, the way it ended, the way you struggled. LeBron's a pig. The ton of criticism that came your way in so many different ways. What's the one thing that was said or written that bothered you the most? You're a douchebag. Uh, uh, that no. I was selfish. Uh, that's the only thing that bothered me. That you know, Does that mean he doesn't go down on girls? Person, oh, wow. Basketball player and, uh, his own self-gratification. You know, I strive yeah. on being a team player. You know, doing whatever it takes to help this team win. But at the same time, I use it as motivation. And, uh, you know, I'm happy that I was able to make enough plays to put ourselves in a position to win this championship. You said that last year you were trying to prove something. And this year you realized you didn't have to do that. So how do you refocus your mind? How did you do that? I just went back to the basics. Uh, You know, I knew what got me to this point, and that was hard work and dedication. Um, And I never had to prove anything to anyone. You know, in my first seven years, I just went out and let the game take care of itself. And last year... I tried to prove something to everybody, you know, and I played with a lot of hate, and that's not the way I play the game of basketball. I play with a lot of love, hater, with a lot of passion, and uh, that's what I got back to this year. Sound like he was drinking his hater aid. Ooh, no one likes that. Nobody likes that. Yeah, don't drink. Your Nobody hater. likes a hater. Yeah. So uh, yeah, go Miami, LeBron MVP. I'm sure this won't be the last title for Miami. I I'm, doubt it. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Do you think they'll do uh, the pull of Bulls and you know '90s Bulls and go for six or? No. No. I th- I don't think any – well, I won't say that will never happen again, but I think it's going to be a long time before that ever happens again. Th- yeah. That was a special team. It was, and yeah. at the time, the West was awful. Correct. Yeah, the, we- the West was very weak. Um, I will say about Miami, though, um, and knowing me as a, a longtime Laker fan from years gone by, um, this team, the Miami team, especially last night, showed me the closest thing to Showtime that I've ever seen since yeah. Showtime. It's true. It, where especially Showtime, last night. Oh, yeah, especially last night where, you know, most teams, they, you get a big lead, you're up three games to one, you get a big lead, you start to let up. Miami Lakers. didn't let up. They just, just kept pouring it on, which is basically what Showtime used to do. Right, and then when they were up 10, they weren't happy with no. being up 10. They want to be up 20. Exactly. And for a lot of the game, they're up 20 plus. Right, So and they felt that they uh, – didn't do their job if they weren't sitting on the bench and letting the second string in in the fourth quarter. So that you could see, you could pretty much see that in Miami last night. And it's true. And I think LeBron and D Wade both set out the last uh, like four minutes of the game. Yeah. So there you go. Minutes, yeah. yeah. So they definitely uh, did their job by letting the bench come in and, and close out the game. Yeah. Yeah. So. Miami dominated when they needed to, and uh, congrats. Yeah. Oklahoma City had a chance in the third, and they just couldn't capitalize. Yeah, they're young. It's their first time. Um, I mean, since being in Seattle. Yeah, uh, they've got a young leader there in Kevin Durant, who uh, he's going to be heard from in the, in the in the future. Yeah, it's true. Um, and it's funny because I think uh, Oklahoma City has a great coach. Oh, I agree. And they're obviously young and athletic, so I think you know that's going to take them far. Where Miami uh, doesn't have a great coach, <laughs> I think Spolster just said, "Hey, LeBron, what do you want to do this time?" <laughs> And I think LeBron and D. Wade kind of ran the team. But, uh, it yeah, worked. I'm sure he had uh, a little bit of whispering in his ear from Pat. Yeah, oh, I'm sure anything, any decision he made had to be approved through Pat. Yeah. So, but, uh, yeah, uh, Dan Gilbert, who is the uh, owner of the Cavs, who also said that the Cavs will win their title before Miami ever <laughs> does when LeBron left, um, he tweeted last night after the after the game, great NBA season, enjoyed playoffs, congrats. Congratulations to Miami and OKC for an exciting finals. Back to work on next week's promising Cavs draft. Well, it is pretty promising because you're so far down in the standings. Yeah. Pretty high up in the draft. Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah. So. And uh, the more I like LeBron, the less I like uh, Dan Gilbert. <laughs> I guess it goes hand in hand. I, I could be. Uh, just by looking at his, uh, his history and uh, the way he runs a team, um, sorry, Cleveland, I just don't see it ever happening while he's in charge. No, I mean, you, you guys got rid of... Uh, Ramon Sessions, who we will say is not an amazing point guard, but he's a really good backup. 
Yes. And yeah. and who do you have to back up Kyle Lowry now? Anybody? I anybody? can't think of anybody. Exactly. And he <laughs> you know, he was hurt last year for a short period of time. It's, yeah. You know, if he's as as a rookie, if he's already getting hurt, you know, you might want to have yourself a good backup. But Correct. You, you traded Sessions, and though he didn't pan out the way the Lakers hoped he would, he was still better than Walton and Capono that we dropped for him. Oh, yeah, no question about it. So, obviously, and, Cavs are idiots. And who's or, to say he won't be with the Lakers next year? But um, Yeah, he's waived his, his right to sign for the next year, but maybe he's holding out for a bigger contract with them. Yeah. I he mean, he wants he a long-term deal wherever he goes. Yeah, he, he's knows he can get more money in a long term. Um, the Lakers definitely they need a point guard. I don't know if he's the answer, and now that he's opted out, I don't know that they would resign him. I they, doubt it. I doubt it. Probably not for he wants what he wants at least. Probably not. Uh, but yeah, he, he good for him. He's probably gonna make some big money somewhere. Yeah. But he's got a lot of growing up to do too. Yeah, he has some growing up. He's he's definitely not a starting point guard of a world championship team. Yet. Definitely not. He's a really good backup. Yes. So hopefully we can get ourselves a uh, Deron Williams. And maybe someday he will be a good starting point guard. Yeah, he's just not there. He's too young. So um, I guess this is. I guess we can consider this breaking news. Breaking news. Um, I'm just finding this over the wire. Arbitrator Kenneth Dam. Damn him. Damn. Has affirmed the National Basketball Players Association posi- position that NBA players claimed off waivers retain their bird rights when they become free agents. Meaning Jeremy Lin, uh, Steve Novak, uh, Chauncey Billups of the Clippers, J.J. Hickson on the Blazers. Could all be covered by the exceptions that allow clubs to exceed their salary caps to re-sign their own players. All four were waived this season before joining their current teams. They will become free agents July 1st. The NBA said it would appeal the decision. Uh, the ruling also would apply to future players claimed off wa- waivers. Uh, we're pleased that Professor uh, Dam <laughs> recognized that a player does not forfeit Damn. these important rights unless he makes an affirm- affirmative decision to sign with a new team as a free agent said NBPA executive Billy Hunter. Uh, Players fought hard for a collective bargaining agreement that allows maximum flexibility for free agent players while also permitting teams to retain their core free agents, and today's decision affirms both of these important principles. Uh, So I guess basically people like Jeremy Lin that were signed in the middle of the season after being dropped um, can stay on the team, and if if, it goes over the salary cap as long as that happened, I guess they're okay to keep them on. And go over with no penalties. Do you know what I have to say about that? What? Damn! <laughs> Damn! <laughs> Actually, I thought that was had something to do with uh, NBA not liking birds. But now that you explain that to me, I now I know what they're talking about. Yeah, apparently it's it's not birds that are the problem here. I thought maybe some bird shed all over Stern's car and he was pissed and made the bird rule. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't do something like uh, have it killed or something. Yeah, He's an idiot. Uh, Tony Parker, we reported last week, got some glass in his eye when he was at a nightclub in New York, and then we found out later on that the glass uh, was due to a fight between Drake and Chris Brown over Rihanna. Uh, now more details are coming out, and Tony Parker is suing the club. Uh, it's, called, it's called WIP um, to New York, and he's suing him for $20 million. Apparently, he's saying that uh, security didn't do anything to prevent that sort of situation from happening. So. Not prepared. Yeah. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Well, hey, he was just out having a good time, being yeah. an innocent bystander, and these two idiots fighting over some bitch, and then he got hurt. Yeah. I wonder if anybody else, I mean, they haven't reported that anybody else did, but I wonder if anybody else got any you know, glass in the eye or anything resulting from that altercation. I would say nobody worth any, I mean, we're, no, nobody <laughs> famous. Right. Yeah. If it was, you know, there could have been like some guy got his head cut off, but hey, Tony Parker got his glass in his <laughs> eye. Right. I just wonder if, uh, you know, anybody else will be filing lawsuits now that he has, you know, now that a famous person has, of. if they, can, they follow suit. Yes, they Pun do. intended. Wow. Yeah. Uh, also, Magic finally hired a GM. They picked up 30-year-old Rob Hennigan, who was uh, OKC's assistant GM. Yes. So uh, we'll see what happens there. It's interesting that he's so young. Yeah. Well, he was also a, a intern with the San Antonio Spurs. Yeah, prior to uh, OKC. That's where he started. Correct. So uh, having a young guy in the office maybe could be a good thing and get a little fresh talent in there and yeah. a yeah, fresh eye, or it could be a bad thing. Who knows? He's got work to do. He's got to rep- uh, get a replacement for uh, Van Gundy and uh, uh, get prepared for the draft and all that. So uh He's got a busy schedule ahead of him. Yeah, a busy next few weeks for that draft happens, that's for sure. Yeah. 
So also Steve Nash, uh, you listening here? Trigger Mike, pew, pew, you asshole. <laughs> uh, Steve Nash is interested in going to New York. Uh, as we as we all know, he's a free agent this summer. Mm-hmm. So uh, New York apparently is a good option for him. He says. And I bet Amari would love to see him back. Oh, I'm sure, because uh, Amari's been suffering ever since he left Phoenix. And Personal I wonder, stats. Exactly. But w- what would Melo think? Mm. Or maybe Melo would like that also. He had somebody else feeding him the ball. Who knows? Uh, yeah, but uh, once the ball gets in Melo's hands, that's about as far as it goes. Yeah, it's pretty much about right. And then it doesn't go anywhere. Right. It goes to uh, the backboard and then to the uh, rebounder's hands. But maybe Nash is the guy that could, you know. You get Melo to think straight. I doubt it. I think Melo's the problem on that team. I agree. Uh, when Lynn came in, when Melo was out, and Stoudemire was in, and they were winning games, and I, I just think Melo is a talented player, but he's he's selfish and doesn't work in yep. most systems. You look at his former team. Yeah. Once they got rid of him. I mean, they didn't win a championship, but they seemed to play a lot better together. Yeah, they played better as a team, and, and statistically, I don't think they did any worse. Right. So, And they still you know, made what seven games of the first round of, of the playoffs so overrated yeah i i think he's a little bit of an iverson he's a great talent but he's not a team player what does he feel about practice <laughs> i wish i had that <laughs> up. oh the problems of being in the mobile studio sorry don't have all my sound drops we it's my fault. talking about practice <laughs> um though we don't have that we know what reggie thinks maybe i'll do something uh, naughty. Yeah. I don't know what that's to do with basketball, but he'll do something. Who cares? Naughty. Yeah, exactly. So it was that. Uh, Kevin Garnett, considering retirement, uh, he's a free agent along with the uh, a lot of other Celtics this year. And the word on the street has been Danny Age is going to drop all the old people since they didn't go anywhere. This is their, kind of their last run. Um, he, he said in a radio interview that, that that's not the plan, but who knows? He's a fucking right, idiot. Yeah. He's an asshole. Um, probably because he's from Boston. Yeah. Yeah, he he said on that interview he does want Garnett and Ray Allen back, but we'll which see. doesn't really make sense because Ray Allen had an awful season. Yeah, he did. I mean, so I mean, the big three is no longer the big three. It's really a Rondo and a bunch of old people. Yeah. So I mean, Garnett was very effective in the postseason. He kind of stepped it up and, mm-hmm. and toughened up a bit. I think it started when uh, their center, what's his name, went out with an injury, and, and Garnett had to start playing center. He kind of, you know, threw his balls around a little bit. Was it O'Neal? Was it O'Neal? Jermaine. Yeah, it must have been. Not the other one. Yeah, not the Shaquille. <laughs> yeah, I believe it. Yeah. Uh, he's considering retirement. I have a feeling he'll be back. Oh, yeah, I don't think he'll retire just yet. No, everybody has a little sour taste in their mouth after they get knocked out of a, a playoff game. Exactly. Um, so we'll see what happens there. The Hornets today traded uh, Ariza and Okafor to the Wizards for Richard Lewis. But here's the thing: do the new CBA, uh, they could drop Richard Lewis with no penalties or anything. Right. So apparently they're just freeing up cap room. Yeah, and he's actually owed uh, close to twenty three million next year. Lewis. Yeah. Yeah, he's he had a big contract going. Yeah, that, but he uh, could be bought out for uh, thir- almost fourteen million. Yeah, and I think there's some sort of clause where they can drop him for almost nothing. Yeah. So uh, we'll see what happens there, but they're obviously dumping room for some sort of big signing. Uh, yeah, maybe, and he, maybe because they're gonna get the number one pick, and they know they're gonna, probably me, he didn't really have the best years. No, I mean, last year like almost eight points per game and three per, almost thirty nine percent from the field, twenty four percent from the free throw range. Yeah, twenty three point range. Oh, I was like twenty four from the free throw. <laughs> Holy shit! Three points. I thought Sorry. Shaq retired. <laughs> well, Shaq taught Shaq taught him how to shoot free throws. Mm-hmm. So. So yeah, so I, I don't think he's worth twenty three million if you compare last year. No, he had a horrible so year. I, I have a feeling they're going to take that option. I mean, the last few years he went from uh, Orlando to Washington. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but though I think that uh, Trevor Reza might have a decent chance on Washington. They're a very young team. Yeah, he he'd be good. Uh, I think he'd be good for that team. He's yeah. good for any team really if they if they play him right. Right. He he's a, he's a quick guy quick and he's a role player he's not really a starter right. st- star kind of guy yeah, you know he's your rick fox kind of guy. he was a kind of right like he was on the lakers right in the years past yeah hit a couple uh important threes stole a lot of important balls uh i would have kept him over meta any day of the week because he's so much faster yeah um he kind of like shannon brown was 
a couple of good role players they decided to dump because Cupcake's an idiot. <laughs> we won't get into that today. Nope, that's on the next show. Yeah, so or we'll, some other time. Yeah, some other time. So, or I think I've talked about it enough. Um, True. So there's that. The top selling NBA jerseys uh, worldwide. This was kind of interesting. Worldwide, uh, top NBA jerseys. We'll start at number 10, Kevin Durant. Number nine, Blake Griffin. Number eight, Mello. Number seven, Rondo. Number six, D. Wade. Number five, uh, Dwight Howard. Number four, Kevin Garnett. Number three, LeBron. Number two, Derek Rose. Number one, internationally selling NBA jersey, Kobe Bryant, the Los Angeles Lakers. That was a drum roll. It was a good one, too. Okay. Um, so uh, Kobe might be getting old, but he's still fan favorite. Yeah, worldwide. Worldwide. Of course, the number one selling jersey in the U.S., Derek is- Rose. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, I don't have that list. I have uh, in China, it goes uh, Kobe, D. Rose, LeBron, Dwight Howard, uh, Rondo. Interesting. China likes Rondo a lot. Uh, Europe, Kobe, obviously, D. Rose, LeBron, Garnett, Dwight Howard. And Latin America, Kobe, LeBron, uh, D. Rose, Kevin Garnett, and D. Wade. So How about that. Spain? They don't have Spain on here. I don't either. Probably Gasol. That's what I was thinking, or Rubio. Oh, yeah. Probably Kobe first and then... Gasol, Gasol, Rubio. Maybe. Yeah. The two Gauls. Two Gauls. Two Gasols. Yeah. Whatever they are. Um, so, suck on that, LeBron, with your Mr. MVP and all yeah. that shit. Yeah. Your jersey's not selling that good. Yeah. So, you just throw that trophy in the trash. Yeah. And your MVP title and all that stuff. Yeah, because I know you care. Yeah. You know, he probably doesn't give a fuck. I, but I doubt he does. I don't give a <laughs> fuck. I'm a hitman. I'm a and neither do we. Correct. Time for don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck about yeah, this part. Exactly. David, now Bandian, uh, doesn't really matter what his name is. He's a tennis player, and I put the video up on Facebook.com slash the charity strike. He was kicking, uh, well, he, he he missed a ball or whatever playing tennis. Who really cares what he was doing? He went over to kick the little uh, wood barrier that surrounds the line judge, and it broke the little piece of wood and went into the judge's leg and actually cut him. Ow! Yeah. Uh, it's kind of funny. He's an asshole. That was uh, an awesome barrier. You know, it really protected the judge. Yeah, yeah. It was well built. Uh, yeah. Made in Mexico. Yeah. Um, so. you know what, what's funny about that is uh, the police are actually investigating that. Mm-hmm. The police the are British, investigating? The British police the are British investigating are him for doing that. That's awesome. So it's like an assault now? I guess so, yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah, they turned that over to, to uh, we, what's their... Scotland Yard? Scotland Yard? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. To the tea department. Hello. Hello, mate. Let's have some tea. Oh, that's Australian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good eye. Um, yeah, so check out the video, facebook.com slash the charity shrek. Spanish golfer. Uh, hey, pasta. Yeah, exactly. Lara disqualified after Caddy tries to hide a club. Uh. This is great. Uh, today, Jose Manuel Laura was disqualified from golf's BMW International Open after his caddy tried to hide the presence of an extra club in the Spaniard's bag. Uh, Lara's caddy noticed a 15th club in the bag. Apparently, he can only have 14. I guess so. I didn't know that until I read the story. 15th club in the bag. Uh, in you know what? I didn't either, and as much as we are into golf, right. I'm surprised we didn't know that. My favorite sport. That's exactly. Not a sport. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, bag on this... It, Found the, uh, the club in the bag on the second hole of yesterday's opening round in Cologne, Germany. Went to some bushes to try to hide it, according to European Tour referee John Paramore. That raised a, the suspicions of playing partners Damien McGrain and Peter Hedgloom. Uh, who is this? Paramore said they went and asked the chap. Chap. Oh, chap. What are you, yeah. What are you doing? And he sort doing, of fu- old chap? <laughs> and he sort of fumbled out an answer saying, I've got this wrong. I've done something bad. I wish it hadn't happened. Um, after the caddy acknowledged his actions, which <coughs> Paramore wow, deemed serious, Lara was given a two-stroke penalty on each of his first two holes, which happens to me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> after finishing with a one over par 73, the two-time European Tour winner was disqualified. Quote, it was clearly the caddy doing what he felt at the time was the right thing, was clearly the wrong thing. Paramore, Paramore told Sky Sports, not the band, this guy. Uh, he's kind of been asked not. He's kind of been asked <laughs> not to come back, and that's how the matter's been resolved. Kind of been asked, like Kinda. how do, you, how do you? Hey, man, it'd be great if you decided like not to show up and stuff tomorrow. Yeah, it would be okay. You know, if you want to show up, it's okay. But I'd hate to see a bullet in your head. Or right. 
you know how those golfers are. They're oh, serious yeah, about they're, their they shit. Don't, they don't screw around. Not at all. So that I, was awesome. Is Laura like Rain Man? How did he know there was an extra club in his bag? I don't know. What was his caddy that found it? Oh, the the caddy found. I, was the, I thought it was the caddy that lost that uh, hit it. Well, yeah, he the caddy. Oh, realized, he found it and then realized and hit it. Okay. The caddy fucked up by putting extra clubs in I there. I really got to start listening. And then, one of these days, yeah. and then realized it and then tried to hide it. Do we have a show, by the way? A what? Never mind. Okay. Uh, also, Kim Kardashian and uh, apparently likes RG three. That's what I heard. Yeah, they were on the set together for uh, the live episode of Thirty Rock a couple months ago, and uh, she started asking questions about him. And said, "You know, he's that." Uh, he he's something big in football, right? <laughs> and somebody said, "Well, yeah, he was the number one draft overall." Oh, so that's good, right? <laughs> yeah. What team is he on? He said Washington. He goes, "Oh, well, what's their name?" The Redskins. Uh, so she's an idiot, clearly. That I didn't make that up, by the way. She really was asking those questions. No, I. You're right. So yeah, which uh, is kind of funny that she would not know football because she dated Reggie Bush. Right. So you think she know a little bit about? She know a little bit. What do you think Bush did for a living? Right. Bush. What a stupid bitch. Yes. And also one last don't give a fuck. That would be you. And your your swimming. Me and my swimming. We will sing about swimming till we find the stone. Ryan Lochte. There it is. I got it. Uh yeah, this is another we don't give a fuck. Ryan Lochte is supposedly to be the next uh Phelps. Oh. Actually I he's supposed to be better than Phelps is what oh. they're saying. So he will be in the 2012 Olympics in London, and uh, they're saying that... Uh, He's an American, right? Yes. Okay. And they're saying that he, who in the past was Phelps' bitch, oh. the roles are reversed. Phelps will now be his bitch. Phelps will now be carrying his Speedo to the That is good. And, yes, and washing his little Speedo trunks Aww. in his mouth. That's Oh, wow. Yeah. That's adorable. So uh, we don't give a fuck either. No. And on to uh, semi-real sports. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Blue Jackets get Philly goalie <laughs> <laughs> Sergei Bobrovsky uh, for draft picks. Like, apparently this guy is a really good backup goalie. Uh, Philly now has like three draft picks for him. So uh, interesting pickup for the Blue Jackets. By the way, Blue Jackets also have the number two overall pick in the draft that's about to happen. So uh, they're poised to uh, maybe have a decent se- uh, season next year. Yeah, I, I think uh. it's, it's a little bit of an improvement for them since uh, they had Steve Mason and Curtis Sanford last year who really struggled. They averaged 3.13 goals per game. So. Look at you with stats. Look at me. Look at you. Yeah, bitches. Yeah, suck. Oh. Got, and those are all in my head. I'm not reading that. I see somebody I used to know. Yeah. Uh, also, Drew Doughty of the Kings, the world champion Kings. And my favorite player, by the way. Is he? He's on the Kings, right? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, that guy. Yeah. Uh, but he's not the guy who said fuck on live TV. Oh, well, then he's my second favorite. Yeah, you're getting Well, oh, after up. this, now he's my favorite again. Yeah. Anyways, he was uh, accused in March of rape charges, and now they're saying that he will most likely be cleared of the charges. According to the woman, the story was he hit on her at a bar. She denied him. He was angry and embarrassed, and... As he was leaving, he, quote, wrangled her into a cab, took her home, raped her. Yeah. I guess you roped her and hogtied her. Rodeo. Yeah. Uh, Canadians are known to do that. (laughs) Uh, Got her home, raped her. Then she took a cab to a hospital, the home, and then to a hospital. And then while at the hospital, the cops uh, interviewed her. Basically, they're saying that uh, lack of evidence and credibility from her leads to them not believing and or giving a fuck, really. Gold digger. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, that's all I got for hockey. Oh, we have a little bit of fighting news. Uh, first so he of all, scored, by the way. <laughs> hey, there he did. Yeah. Where was the goalie? Yeah. And that one. Yeah, anyway, for, yeah. First of all, don't watch UFC 147. Just watch the free one on Friday, as uh, Mike said. And we're saving pew, your pew. money. Yeah. And also, more fighting news. More fighting. Yes. Uh, a kind of interesting story. Uh, obviously, by now, most of you who know anything about sports... Uh, and those about the Manny Pacquiao fight and how he was uh, kind of robbed. Um, Wednesday, the w- WBO completed its review of the controversial uh, split decision. What they did was they got five judges that are not from Nevada, <laughs> uh, sat him down, had him watch the fight. And uh, here's what the scores were. They didn't say who the judges were. They remained anonymous. Clearly. Uh, but the score was for Pacquiao, 
118, 110, 117, 111, 117, 111, 116, 112, and 115, 113. So obviously it was a uh, all everybody voted for uh, Pacquiao. A unanimous. A win. unanimous decision. Um, Pacquiao saying, "Hey, I don't want them to. I don't want to take the belt. I don't. You know, I don't care about all the controversy. I want to settle it in the ring in November." Yeah. Well, he wants to make money. So there you go. On that note, I need he more. He even beer. lost and made money. I mean, he made oh, like yeah. twenty something million. Well, he made more than the other guy, right? To lose, yeah. And then the other guy made like five million to win. Yeah, isn't that so. funny? The the new champion made like almost no money. Yeah, he made like you know five percent of what Pacquiao made or whatever. There you go. So, all right. On that note, I need more beer. We're running out over here. Me too. Yeah, we're gonna take a break. Make sure while we're <laughs> taking that break, uh, you try not to listen to his burp, and you check us out at thecharitystrike.com where you can cook on our Amazon batter batter. Hey, batter, batter. Yeah, if you're trying to cook some pancakes, click on the Amazon oh, batter. Yeah, I like Try and buy something from Amazon, you click on the Amazon banner. <laughs> you can also check out pictures from our super sexy celebrity photo shoot we did. We can you buy pancakes on the Amazon? Oh, yeah. They, all, they even got like gluten-free shit for those glue out I there. I love it. Yeah. Uh, you can also check out our pictures, our shows, current, past, all that good stuff. We're on there. Our podcast friends, such as Adam and Reggie and some others. Uh, you can also go to us on Facebook, facebook.com slash the charity strike. You can uh, do Facebooky stuff with us, you know, when we put uh, pictures and photos and all that stuff on there. Our Facebook the, is very entertaining. It is. I look at it all the time. Lots of sluts and lots oh, of funny sports that's videos. That's why I look at it. Yeah, many of the sluts. Uh, also, Twitter, at the Cherry Strick, no E at the end. You can find us on Twitter um, and tweet. We tweet all kinds of uh, st- sports stories throughout the day and all that good stuff. And also, if you want to call us, 805 419 3679. That's the number. You can leave a message when we're not on the air and you can uh, talk to us when we are. Yeah, talk it's, shit. Yeah, it's a good time. We love shit talkers uh, and all that good stuff. And as you know, we're on iTunes. Find us on iTunes, The Cherry Strike. There's links on the website. So, anyways, we'll be right back, everybody. Bad bitches. It's time. Hey, this is Anthony from the Quickberry Podcast. Join me every Monday as I bring you the hottest Blackberry news from all your favorite sites and play the coolest funny music from thepump.com. To subscribe to the QuickBerry Podcast, go to www.quickberrypodcast.com. Hey everyone, we're inviting you to join Watson Alien on the Music Podcast, Future Livecast. We interview music guests and play some of their songs, as well as play our own original music with in-depth discussions about each song. Just go to futurelabrats.com and click on Podcast on the left. There you can find all the latest episodes and even our extra shows called Rat Droppings. Futurelabrats.com Three, two, one. Delicious. <laughs> Welcome back into the Cherry Strike, everybody. Greg the Rebound Jones sitting across from Midlife Crisis. Welcome back, bitches. Yeah. I hope you're all up on our website shit. You better be, the, bitches. Yeah, the CherryStrike.com. Anyways, yeah. welcome back. Like I said, uh, I say uh, maybe we should talk about a little baseball now. Baseball. Baseball it is. Uh, Joe. Joe. Joel. <laughs> not even Joel, but Joel. Joel with an L. Peralta, uh, as we reported last time, was suspended after having an unknown substance in his glove. Apparently, it wasn't jizz. Apparently, it was uh, Apparently. some maple syrup. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, he was given eight days, which was kind of fucked up, I think, because we'll, we'll run down some other suspensions this year, um, such as Phillies pitcher Cole Hamels, who was given a five-game suspension for admitting that he intentionally hit the Nationals rookie Bryce Harper uh, with a pitch back in the early earliness of May. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, Brett Lowry, who was rung up for four games after an ejection in which he tossed a helmet that bounced up and and supposedly accidentally struck umpire Bill Miller. He didn't mean to. Right, of course. And then there's my favorite, my, my best buddy ever, <laughs> Delman Young, <laughs> who... Douchebag, who was given seven games uh, after being arrested on an aggravated hate crime harassment charge in which he allegedly shouted anti Semitic epithets amid a drunken altercation outside of his hotel in New York. Wow. Right. 
So all these other things that involve dangerousness, like hitting a, a batter and throwing a helmet, which, first of all, throwing anything is against the rules. Right. And then it hit an umpire. Throwing equipment, you're supposed to be uh, kicked out of the game. Right. And then, uh, you know, telling some Jews that you hate them. Yeah, that's... Uh that deserves a game or two. Right. Well, these all got less suspension than having some fucking pine tar in this guy's glove. Wow. Yeah. I so think it's, it's okay to hate people. It's okay to... to, to you uh, can hate and hit. Hate and it possibly end a guy's career, but some guy, they found some sticky substance in his glove, so right. that's worse. <laughs> There's always sticky substance in my glove. Well, me too, but yeah. that's why I'm scared now. I don't want to get suspended for eight games. Mm-mm. I think it's a little fucked up. And as of this morning, he was appealing. As of this afternoon, almost breaking news, he has dropped his appeal. Uh, I don't know why. It's his first offense. Um, I think they probably would have let him off at least a couple of games. You but think. It, yeah, it's kind of fucked up. He's going to miss somewhere between four and five games because it's an eight-game eight suspension, and he's uh, not a starter. So. And whose life was in danger for that? Right. Nobody's. It's, that's ridiculous. Uh, yeah, it's really ridiculous. Um, and the Nationals manager, uh, what's his name, Johnson? The national, yeah, yeah, Davy Johnson. Yeah, Little Johnson. <laughs> it's not the first time he's done this, right? No, yeah, I actually did that um, in the '88 uh, League Championship Series when he was manager of the Mets. Oh, against the Dodgers. Against the Dodgers and uh, yeah, J- uh, Jay Howell. He did the same thing. Yeah, uh, and actually, it would. It, I mean, to even add more to that, um, um, what's his name? Um, Peralta was on Johnson's team last year. Right. So Johnson. He pretty knew. much knew he did it. Right. And so, but yeah, so So Peralta's cheating by putting that in his glove. But isn't Johnson cheating by having basically insider information that he puts that in his glove? Because yeah. he worked on it. Uh, Madden, who's now uh, Peralta's manager, uh, said that Johnson's actions were cowardly, bush, and bogus. Yes, I agree. I do too. Um, and also, I think that the uh, suspension of H. Of eight days was yes, cowardly, yeah. bush, and bogus. I do too. I agree. No That's one ridiculous. was ever in, din- in danger at any point. The only thing that was in danger was, you know, who could have possibly won the game. He didn't even throw a pitch. No. He, he got to the mound, and then Johnson called the umpires over. Um, I think it's ridiculous. I, I think do. like a three-game suspension since it's, it's his first offense, you know? You yeah, slap at, him the on the wrist. at the most. Three at the most. Yeah, three at the most because – when it happened in 88 with the Dodgers, with he, I think he got a three-game, and then it got reduced to a two-game after an appeal. Uh, yes, right. If yeah. I'm correct. Yeah, you're so, correct. You yeah. are, as always, you're correct. Well, you know, always. Even if I'm wrong, I'm right. That's right. So, so you're the producer. I, yeah, exactly. So I don't know where <coughs> this eight games comes from. It's ridiculous. Stupid. Fuck you, Bud Selig. Yeah. You and Goodell and Stern can go suck each other off. Oh. Yeah. All right, what else is going on? KC, uh, Kansas City, there, Felipe Palino. Uh, looks like he'll probably be needing some Tommy, Tommy John surgery towards UCL. Uh, he's going for a second opinion, but doesn't look good. Uh, Kansas City also got back their catcher, Salvador Perez. He was on the 60-day DL. But here's the deal. Kansas City right now has seven people on the DL. Holy shit. Five of which are 60 days and two are 15. Now, didn't Paulino go out uh, with a groin injury? Did he? I believe he he went out with a groin injury. And now he had he's gonna have Tommy John surgery because of his elbow. What was he doing? I think, with that groin? I think they're related. <laughs> and there's a connection. That's all there. I'm gonna say about that. Yikes! And that's all I got to say about that. Is that the bottom line? And that's the bottom line because midlife said so. Oh shit! And <laughs> slight delay. <laughs> that's for you slow people out there. Yeah. Anyways, uh, what else is going on? Uh, Troy Tulowitzki of the Rockies had surgery for his hockey goalie slash baseball pitcher <laughs> syndrome, uh, which is great because he's a shortstop. So that doesn't make any sense. Also, the A's swept the Dodgers in uh, three games the other day. Ouch. Yeah, it really hurts. Kemp, uh, speaking of Dodgers, though, is hoping to return for the All-Star game. Um, I hope it's not because he wants to play in the All-Star game. I just hope he's trying to come back to the team because the All-Star game is fucking retarded. I hope not. Kemp said, I'm going to be back. I will be back for the All-Star game. Maddenly said, he will be back after the All Star game. So, I agree with Mattingly. I yeah. think uh, even if he's ready by the All Star game, yeah. I think they should hold I, him. I would too, especially because of the history where he came right. back and was injured again. What's long, What's wrong with him sitting another three days? Exactly. Come on, he's getting paid either yeah, way. Right. Sit your ass down, just because you're. Was he the captain of like the the batting squad or whatever? Exactly. So, yeah. Shut up. Sit your ass down. 
Um, I think that's all we got for baseball. You got anything else? Baseball? Right I now? do not at oh. this time. Well, in that case. It's the sport of kings. Oh, yeah. Better than diamond rings. rings. That's why we're here to sing. Football. 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 Oh, football. Oh, baby. Oh, Every weekend. Sunday. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, yeah, there's that for you. <laughs> oh, God. Um, Sandusky, topping off football. Maybe they like it. Um, jurors are in their second day of deliberations right now. They've uh, been been looking into the situations. Now, to Sandusky's benefit, it's been reduced from 50, I think it was two charges. Now it's only 48 charges. Oh, thank God. Yeah, he is saved. So, like, 10 of them liked it. <laughs> Maybe they like the 10 of the 12. <laughs> um, the jury, according to this report that I don't steal from any other sources, the jury also listened to testimony of Dr. Jonathan Dranov, a oh, McQuarrie yeah. family friend. Mm-hmm. Uh, McQuarrie is the one who, who caught him in the shower in the locker room. Uh, was read aloud. Dr- Dranov had, I guess it's Dranov, Dranov, I don't know. Who cares? Had testified that McQuarrie, then a graduate assistant, had told him of his encounter with Sandusky and the young boy, but left out any details about seeing sexual contact. Dranov allowed that uh, McQuarrie was visibly shaken and had implied that he heard quote unquote sexual sounds, but offered no graphic descri- uh, description. Uh, by 11.04 a.m. today, Friday, however, Judge John M. Cleland sent the jury back to continuing sifting You're through back. the 48 counts. Get back there, bitches. Some you. of them, Yeah. Some of them involved overtly sexual acts, including anal and oral sex with a minor. Nine days after, or nine, after nine days of testimony. Uh, on Thursday, the, the jury was dismissed and sequestered at 9 p.m. after hearing closing arguments and deliberating for eight hours. Personally, I think this whole trial is anal. <laughs> I see you did that. Yeah, you see that. I huh? see it. That was good. <laughs> yeah. That was good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On Thursday, however, the case took another sensational twist. Wow. Kind of like his dildo. Sensational. Yeah. When lawyers for Matt Sandusky, now 33, said the coach's adopted son had been molested as well and had offered to testify for the prosecution. What the hell? Exactly. Matt Sandusky had been involved in the Second Mile, the charity for troubled youth where <laughs> they're troubled because they're around Sandusky. Yeah, no shit. Yeah. Troubled youth where prosecutors have argued jury. The problem is what happened the first mile yeah. and in the second mile. Yeah. It was all yeah, downhill from there. Yeah. Uh, Sandusky found his victims. At about age, age 11, Matt went to live with the Sandusky's first as a foster child. Um, so it's not looking good. One of the other accusers said that he wrote him, quote, creepy love letters and all kinds of good stuff. Go no Sandusky. Love letters. No creepy um, ones? Yeah. I'm jealous. Sorry about that. Oh, well. Anyway, Yeah. So there's that. That's uh, dirty, if you will. Yeah. Oh, speaking of college football, though, the BCS uh, playoffs will be approved um, for a four-team college football playoff system Monday by uh, the, the president, the FBS. Here's the details after it gets approved Monday. A 12-year agreement for a four-team seeded tournament beginning in the 2014 season. Um, number one will play number four, number two, number three, and the winners of the two games will meet for the title. The tournament will include the top four teams regardless of conference champion status. And the semifinals will be played in bowls, and six bowls will share hosting duties during a 12-year period. And the champions game will be put out for bids. Huh? Yeah, whatever. Okay. So at least they're finally doing a playoff uh, system. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, I don't have too much faith in it. Personally. I don't either. I'm confused, but huh? that's not hard to happen to me so anyway right i could ask you what four plus four was huh huh yep uh, six exactly okay then i'm all right never mind i was wrong uh nfl the is denying the gag orders <coughs> sorry i gagged oh i guess so the gag orders and uh covering up retractions in the bounty probe uh lawyers accuse them of that and speaking of bounty probes, <laughs> wow! Probes. Probe my bounty. Yeah, Senator Dick Durbin. That sounds like a porno name. Wow, Dick. Yeah, you can no oh, Dick <laughs> and probe. Hey, what's up? I'm Dick Durbin. Oh. Ooh, you want to fuck? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Dick Durbin of Illinois calls off the bounty hearing. Apparently, he was going to have a congressional bounty hearing uh, with the NFL, but Did called Dick it off. Dick probe that to yeah. Make Dick, sure he... Dick was going to probe the bounty. Oh <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, to to make sure it was all going well. 
uh, stupid. How about the government stays out of sports yet once again? Yeah. Uh, but anyways, he says Roger Goodell did a good job, and so he's uh, called off. It's the, a game. The bounty. It's so fucking stupid. You know what else is stupid? Tim Tebow's fire. Oh, yeah. But that song can only mean one thing, everybody. Oh, yeah. We have a Tebow story. We have a Tim Tebow story. We find the dumbest stories just so we can play the song. Because we love the song. Yeah, we really do. Uh, D. Brickshaw Ferguson likes his new quarterback. I'm sorry, who? Um, D. Brickshaw Ferguson. Dick Durbin, what? Dick Dick's, Ferguson's dick. Like yeah, the, I don't know. Anyway, um, left uh, New York Jets left tackle Dick, D. Brickshaw Ferguson is a fan of Tim Tebow. And I'm going to read this because I'm going to just take my time and listen to Tim Tebow. Right, fire. of course. Okay. Ferguson told the New York radio station WFAN on Thursday that he originally was surprised the Jets traded for Tebow in March. Oh, we all are. Oh, yeah. Who wasn't? Yeah. Even the Jets were. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it just Especially Sanchez. And, yeah, it, exactly. Uh, but his sense has embraced the former Denver Broncos quarterback. I thought he was a virgin. I thought so, too. Yeah, well, Apparently anyway. not. What do we do? Uh, the Sharp Ferguson gets another million dollars. <laughs> it's going to make a lot of other teams really have to second guess what they'll be doing because we have the advantage of having great quarterbacks, and now we have the opportunity to do what we want to do, to do what we want. What, that's wow. what he said. Yeah. Uh, I think everyone was taken aback at first. Ferguson still WFA. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Sorry, continue. Hey, after that, I don't care if I read anymore. Yeah, we're done. Yeah, that's <laughs> Good night, everybody. Yeah, D. Berkshire Ferguson likes Tebow. So, yeah, go, go fucking. Well, yeah, we'll let the song play out. Of course. Because I enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, what else is going on in football? Real football news. That uh, doesn't require songs, but we'll get it anyways. Yeah, because uh, we like Tim Tebow's fire. Yeah, exactly. Fire, fire, fire. Uh, Darrell Rivas still not coming to training or committing to training camp. Still holding on for that contract. Now, two years ago, he did the same thing. Got a new contract extension for four years. And uh, two years later, he's pulling the same shit. Uh, if I were them, I'd drop him. Yeah, I'd say fuck you, go away. Yeah, exactly. He's got a contract. So he's got to go show, you know, show up either way. Yep. Especially, I mean, at least to the season. I don't know what his training camp contract says, but yeah, I don't uh, know. You know, fuck him. Yeah. The NFL Referees Association files charge with the uh, National Labor Relations Board. Uh-oh. They don't like the way the NFL has handled the proceedings. Um, so there's that. The NFL has already started uh, the hiring process for new referees. <laughs> so the old referees, it. yeah, old referees can go fuck themselves. The Lions of Detroit signed R.J. Archer, quarterback from Arena Football League. All right. Yeah, kind of give that rookie a run for his money. Uh, so they think Stafford is not going to do the job. Uh, Stafford? Yeah. Isn't he, is he the Lions quarterback? Is that Lions? I don't know. Am I wrong here? Why was I not thinking he was the Lions? I'm Stafford? Gonna sound, I'm going to sound like an idiot. Oh, I was... Sorry. I was thinking Cutler. Oh, yeah. Cutler. Cutler. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know why I was not thinking Stafford. Um, anyway, so they hired... Uh, think their- more of Cutler than Stafford. Please. Yeah. Exactly. Um, anyways, so yes, so they hired their Arena Football League uh, quarterback. Interesting. Terrell Owens is trying to go for the same thing. <laughs> a quarterback? <laughs> well, Arena Football League going. Oh, to yeah, him. yeah. Yeah, it didn't work out yeah. for him. Uh, yeah. The Giants, Should who are the. Stand in line to sign him. Yeah. The Giants, the reigning Super Bowl champions, uh, not too good in the odds department for repeating. They give them 18 to 1 odds. Wow. Now, I'm excited because one of the teams. One of the, I think it was like seven teams that were ahead of them to get the uh, the ring this year was the 49ers. Oh, there you go. My team. Uh, sadly, I the Chargers were not a part of that. I don't even want to ask. Yeah. I'm not surprised. I, n- I know you're you're thoroughly disgusted. Yeah, surprised. that's a whole new show when you want to hear me around on the Chargers. You know, we got to get you and San Diego Johnny on the same show together and just, just talk about Chargers. San Diego Johnny is awesome with the football. His baseball is sucks, so. Because he likes the Padres? Yeah. Yeah, fucking Padres. Yeah, it's funny how the Padres and the Chargers are very similar in the way they operate. Yeah, and he needs to stop jacking players. off in the intersections. That's <laughs> all I got to say. <laughs> San Diego Johnny? Yeah. Yeah, he really does. Uh, what else? Anything else for football? Oh, uh, Judge misses DJ Williams' uh, lawsuit to overturn his drug dis- uh, suspension. As we know, he's part of the Broncos. Suspended for drugs, and the judge said, fuck you. And the Rams have a age discrimination lawsuit against them. This is the second one going. Uh, uh, she's claiming this old bitch is claiming that the Rams don't like middle-aged women. 
She said she's 54. Uh, Ew. T- that's not middle age. Yeah, nice. that's very young, as the, a matter of fact. I was going to say that's gross and old when it comes to women. Oh, yeah. True. Yeah. Anything over like 32, it's like... Uh, For women. Yeah, they start to sag. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Exactly. Wow, we kept it at uh, to good time here today. We're awesome. That's all I got. You got anything else for us? I do not. In that case, you guys go uh, enjoy yourselves a fantastic weekend. Make sure you yes. check us out at uh, Our City Radio. Oh, yeah. We're big time now. Yeah, Saturday at 4 o'clock. Who knows what time zone? Um, it's OurCityRadio.com. But, of course, you can find us, as always, on the CharityStrike.com. As always. Download our current, past, future episodes. Well, maybe not future. Yeah. Until well, not happen. yet. Yeah, one of these days. You can the also charitystrike.com. That's right. Write that down. Don't forget it. If you do forget it, man, eh, I'm going to kill you. Also, you can find us at uh, Facebook, facebook.com slash the charity strike. Uh, Whereas we mentioned earlier, we, we, we uh, put on the sluts. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, funny stuff mm-hmm. and funny sluts. Oh, yeah. Best combination ever. Also, uh, Twitter, at the charity strike, no E at the end. Uh, tweet with us. We put up a lot of news stuff throughout the day. You can call us 805-419-3679. You can leave a voicemail for not on the air, and we'll uh, we'll probably play it unless you are co- non coherent. At which point, we'll probably still play it. Oh yeah, we'll make you famous. Exactly. Uh, we're already famous. Oh yeah. Am I forgetting anything? Did I get everything? The charity strike at yahoo.com. I think uh, that's there. Uh, Amazon. Hey, go yeah. to the charity strike and uh, click on the Amazon uh, picture there and yeah, buy and you all kinds of shit. Buy all your dildos. Yes. Anything else? That's it. In that case. That's it, bitches. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, bitches. <laughs>